Hi there and welcome to this day in history for November 28th. November 28th is the 332nd day of the year in the Gregorian calendar with 33 days remaining until the end of the year. Today we're going to start back in the year 1520 when Ferdinand Magellan reached the Pacific. We talked about Magellan in at least one previous video. This is the day he reached the Pacific Ocean. This is probably a good time of year to do it, too, because we're in the northern hemisphere where we're moving into winter. The southern hemisphere would be moving into spring, so that would be a good time to do it right now. In 1582, William Shakespeare married Anne Hathaway, and we know this because there's a public record of it where they paid a 40-pound bond for their marriage license in Stratford-upon-Avon. In 1798, trade between the United States and modern-day Uruguay began when John Leamy's frigate John arrived in Montevideo. And I've put a map up here for reference so you can see about where that is. Sometimes when I'm watching news, I think, yeah, but where is that? I wish they'd put a map up. And so I was thinking that as I read this story, so I got a map. There you go. In 1811, Beethoven's Piano Concerto No. 5 in E-flat major, Opus 73, premiered in Leipzig. In 1895, November 28th, was Thanksgiving Day, also the day of the first American automobile race, which took place over the 54 miles from Chicago's Jackson Park to Evanston, Illinois. Frank Duryea piloted a gas-powered horseless carriage, of his and his brother's own design, and the mechanic, inventor, and now race car driver Frank Duryea won the first motor car race in the United States. The outbreak of World War I in Europe forced the New York Stock Exchange to shut its doors on July 31, 1914, after large numbers of foreign investors began selling their holdings in hopes of raising money for the war effort. All of the world's financial markets followed suit and closed their doors by August 1st. And so it is that today, November 28th of 1914, the New York Stock Exchange resumed bond trading after nearly four months, the longest stoppage in the exchange's history. 1919, Lady Astor becomes MP. Now, I believe that means Member of Parliament. American-born Nancy Astor, the first woman ever to sit in the House of Commons, was elected to Parliament with a substantial majority. Lady Astor took the unionist seat of her husband, Waldorf Astor, who was moving up to an inherited seat in the House of Lords. By the way, this is a different Lady Astor from the Mrs. Astor we spoke about in a previous episode, the one that threw those lavish exclusive parties in New York City. Yeah, different person, different generation. In 1925, the Grand Ole Opry began broadcasting. The Grand Old Opry, one of the longest-lived and most popular showcases for Western music, began broadcasting live from Nashville, Tennessee, on this date in 1925. In 1929, American songwriter and producer, founder of Motown Records, Barry Gordy Jr., was born on this day. As I record, in 2019, he turns 90 today, so happy birthday, Mr. Gordy. In 1939, Canadian-American physician and educator James Naismith, famous for inventing basketball, died on this day. In 1943, U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, and Soviet Premier Joseph Stalin met in Tehran, Iran, to discuss war strategy. Tehran was chosen as the site for these talks, largely due to its strategic importance to the Allies. And I have a map for that also. In 1943, American singer, songwriter, composer, and pianist Randy Newman was born. In 1948, American political consultant, journalist, and author Dick Morris was born. Happy birthday, Mr. Morris. On November 28th of 1954, Italian-American physicist and academic and Nobel Prize laureate Enrico Fermi died. Oh my goodness, in 1979, a plane crashed over Antarctica. A New Zealand sightseeing plane traveling over Antarctica crashed, killing all 257 people on board. You see, it is that people found this kind of tour flight fascinating. They love to see the Ross Ice Shelf. The problem with flying over Antarctica, of course, would be that since it's a vast ice and snow-covered continent, <laughs> visibility could be an issue. For one thing, there are no visual references. 
in terms of landmarks, for instance, because everything's covered in white. On this particular day, the tour flight was being flown by pilots unfamiliar with this tour. I mean, they might have been able to get you from Orlando to Albany, no problem, but the vast featureless expanse of Antarctica is another matter. So there's that. Plus, a storm blew up, and that further obscured their ability to tell where they were. But wait, there's more. <laughs> To further complicate matters, magnetic compasses are well nigh useless that close to the South Pole. There were other issues too, and a number of them, and the confluence of multiple pilot errors led to a crash. So, if you're ever in New Zealand and want to go take a sightseeing flight over Antarctica, if they even still do that, make sure it's a favorable weather day and that you're flying with pilots experienced with that exact tour. 1994, serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer was murdered in prison. He was serving 15 consecutive life sentences for the brutal murders of 15 men, and he was beaten to death by a fellow inmate while performing cleaning duty in a bathroom at the Columbia Correctional Institute Gymnasium in Portage, Wisconsin. Now, Jeffrey Dahmer was a truly awful human being. If you recognize the name, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not familiar, I will not burden you with the details, just to say that he was a horrible person. It is totally incomprehensible to me how human beings can treat other human beings that way. 2012 Zig Ziglar. We talked about Zig Ziglar earlier this month on his birthday. He was a success mentor, an author, motivational speaker. He wrote over 30 books. His first book, See You at the Top, was rejected 39 times before it was published in 1975. It's still in print. He had a couple of mottos. One was, you can get everything in life you want if you'll just help other people get what they want. And another one was, you are what you are because of what goes into your mind. I actually got to see him speak once and he said something that was kind of funny to me. He was talking about getting exercise and, and said he was lazy. He said the, the uh, most strenuous exercise he gets is when he's taking a bath and he pulls the plug and he fights the current <laughs> as the water drains. <laughs> I think about that more often than I should. <laughs> Well, every time I get in the bathtub, <laughs> I think, now look out for that current. <laughs> Funny guy, good ideas. Rest in peace, Zig Ziglar. And I think that's going to do it for us today. As always, links to my research are included in the show notes. Thank you so much for watching. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And share, 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 share this thing around. And while you're on YouTube, check out my other channel, 8 Susquehanna. There's a link to that in the show notes also. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Okie dokie, Smokey. Okay, let's turn the volume up. There we go. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> let's do that one again. <clears throat> let's try it again. Okay, do that one again, too. Okay, one more time. Blah, 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 coffee mug. <laughs> it's late enough in the day that we're off coffee and on busy water. No and, there's no and there. <laughs> Just read the words. Just read the words. <laughs> That's a lot of words. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> Some German word that I don't know how to pronounce. Hope I pronounced that right. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men. Did not a man. Sure would be nice if I could ever read one of these in its entirety without having to start anything over. That would be awesome. I might have to take another look at that. I'm going to have to look at that. This is why I don't do live shows. <laughs>